All right, let us look at um, the trading stock account, which are ledger accounts. I'm going to start with financial position accounts section of VC. I will start with trading stock. Remember, trading stock are simply merchandise of goods that we buy in order to resell at a higher price in order to generate profits. So trading stock is an asset account. And since it's an asset account, it goes up at cost price and goes down at cost price. It increases on the debit side at cost price and it decreases on the credit side at cost price. It increases whenever we buy more stock or when stock is returned to us and it decreases whenever we sell stock. So in this case, as I've done in the previous video, um, please note that the balance at the beginning of the month for trading stock will be on the debit side, hence we have balance brought down, the amount is 15200 This account will decrease at cost price whenever we sell goods. That is why on the credit side, this account will decrease with cost of sales figure that comes from the debtor's journal and the amount will be 2,660. Please note that this cost of sales figure that comes from your debtor's journal of 2,660 is simply the cost price of goods sold on credit. So when you go to your debtor's um, journal, and I did indicate it in the previous video, you'll have sales column and you'll have cost of sales column. The total um, simply the net amount of cost of sales. When you cast this whole figure uh, from 450 plus 920 plus 750, in total, it'll give you cost of sales of 2,660. And I indicated in the previous video that that 2,660 will reduce the value of your trading stock. It represents the total cost of goods sold for the month of March and it doesn't stop there. When you go to your CRJ, you also have cost of sales figure of 750, which represents the total cost of sales sold for cash, and that will give us one, uh, it'll give us 750. Now, both amounts will go to the credit side of your trading stock account. As I've indicated, it will be cost of sales, cost of goods sold. Remember, that's what cost of sales represent. And this comes from CRJ and the amount will be 750. This cost of sales figure that comes from CRJ of 750, is simply the cost price of goods sold for cash. Okay, now you'll realize that on the debit side, we've got 15,200. On the credit side, we've got 2,616, and we also have 715. Now, what I need you to do is to take the amount on the credit side of 2,616 and add it with 715. 2,615 added with 715. How much do you get? Two thousand six hundred and sixteen added with seven fifty. How much do you get? You will get three thousand four hundred and ten. Is that correct? Let's check. So you have two thousand six hundred and sixty, and you get that with seven hundred and fifty, and get the total. It is two thousand. It, it is three thousand. 410. Please know that on the debt side, we've got 15,000. These two, when you add them, they will give you 3,410. That means that the debit side is bigger than the credit side. So the balancing figure is what we need right now. Hence, I am going to take 15,200 minus the answer that I got earlier on. It will give me 11,790. That 11,790 becomes my balance carry down. That is a balance we're going to bring 
forward, bring it down to the following month. So the totals must be the same on the debit side and the credit side. That 11,790, it is what is left in the month of March. And we're gonna carry it down to the following month, which is the month of April. And the year is still the same. That's why for April, we're gonna have balance brought down of 11,760. I mean, 719. Moving to debtors control. Debtors control represents all the people that owe us as a sum in total, all the people that owe us, okay? It will increase on the debit side whenever people owe us more. So these are the people where we sold goods to on credit. Now, whenever we sell goods on credit, this account will increase on the debit side. So whenever they return goods to us, it will decrease that um, selling price. It will also decrease that selling price when we offer them discounts. It will decrease that selling price when we have overcharged them and we're reducing what we sold to them. It will decrease that selling price whenever they pay us back. Okay, now the balance at the beginning of the year, since I've said here um, for debtors control, this is an asset, therefore the balance will be on the debit side. The balance at the beginning of the month for debtors control will simply be 2,300. It was a sum of what each data owed us. Now this account will go up whenever we sell on credit. Now, when I did this in class in one of the grade nines, one class actually made a mistake by saying that they included um, the selling price of goods that we sold for cash, which was incorrect. After I specified that in your debtors control account, you only put in the selling price of goods that were sold on credit and the value, the total value of goods that were sold on credit, you will only get it from your debtors journal. It is the total of sales in your debtors journal. And if you watched earlier on, you would have seen that I indicated that these are total credit sales owed to the entity for the year, the one that is highlighted in people. And the total of those credit sales is 3,000. 420. That 3,420 represents what the debtors owe us in the current month due to buying on credit. Now, that is why we are going to, whenever we sell goods on credit, this account will increase on the debit side. That's why we will put in sales. Sales represents goods that we sold. But in this case, these are goods that we sold on credit. That is why we are taking it from the debtor's journal and the total of sales in your debtor's journal will be 3,420. Now you're gonna add the debit side, which is 2,300, okay? You realize on the credit side, we've got nothing, nothing at all, okay? So I'm gonna add the debit side, which is 2,300. Add it with 3,420, it will give me the total. And in this case, the total will be 5,710. Do we have anything on the credit side? The answer is no, we don't have anything on the credit side, but the totals on both sides must be the same. But it seems I've got nothing on the credit side. The balancing figure will be this 5,700, the total, which is 5,700, the total on the debit side, your minus zero, there's nothing on the credit side. So your balance carry down will be this 5,710, okay? So that is why in this case, I will simply have 5,710 as my balance carry down. And the totals will be the same. I'll bring it down to the following month. It will be 5,710. Okay. Now we're gonna to go to nominal account sections, which is made up of sales. Okay, sales represents, <coughs> excuse me, which represents everything that we have sold. Whether we have sold it for cash or on credit, it doesn't matter. Sales is income, therefore it's minus plus. It increases on the credit side. It'll increase at selling price when goods are sold. Sales account will increase on the credit side whenever goods are sold. 
That is why on the credit side, we'll simply have balance dot forward. This is from the previous month of 10,600. Sales will increase on the credit side by goods sold on credit. Remember when I said goods sold on credit, what must come to your mind? Debtors control. When goods are sold for cash, what must come to your mind? It's bank, because bank is going up, okay? Now, in this case, uh, when we sell goods on, um, when we sell goods, we'll sell it on for cash, and we also sell it on a credit. If we sell goods for cash, we are going to increase sales by bank, and it will come from the CRJ, and the amount will simply be 1250 Okay, in the CRJ, your sales, under sales in your CRJ, you'll have 1,250. The total sales amount in the DJ, because DJ represents goods that were sold on credit. When goods are sold on credit, the account that is affected is debtors control. So that is what I'm going to write here. So I will have debtors control from the DJ and the amount will simply be 3,420. When you add it up, it'll give you 15,270. Then we will have cost of sales. Cost of sales is an expense account. It goes up on the debit side whenever, it goes up on the debit side whenever we sell goods for cash. Okay, no, actually it doesn't matter whether we sell goods for cash or on credit. Whenever we sell goods, this account will increase on the debit side by the cost price of those goods, okay? Now, in this case, it will decrease whenever um, the cost price of goods is sold is less, which is doesn't apply in most cases. Okay, now this account um, is an expense account. It will go down when goods um, sold um, are Returned, basically, the cost price of goods returned will be the one that reduces cost of sales, okay? And obviously, in this case, we'll simply have um, the balance at the beginning of the month of an expense. Remember, an expense, it's plus minus. It goes up on the debit side. It goes down on the credit side. Now, in this case, it will be 11,000, okay? It'll go up uh, by the trading stock that we have sold, the cost price of this trading stock we have sold. The cost price of trading stock we have sold um, on credit was 2,660. And the cost price of trading stock that we sold for cash was um, 750, which came from the CRJ. So this account will increase uh, on the debit side by the cost price of trading stock, okay? You realize that these amounts are on the credit side of your trading stock, and now they are on the debit side of your cost of sales. When trading stock goes down, cost of sales will go up by the cost price. Remember, trading stock goes down by the cost price of goods sold, cost of sales will go up on the debit side by the cost price of those goods sold. Hence, the account is trading stock. This is the stock cost price of stock we sold. Um, this is the cost price of stock we sold for on credit, and this is the cost price of stock we sold for cash. And then it'll give us 14,420, but because this is an expense account, it will not have any balance. Um, and I think from the previous video, we discussed this, so I'm going to that. And we also discussed what you could make up those as. If uh, my memory serves me well, we also prepared our data's um, list, which is 5,720. It's made up of what Andra Mini owes us and what you could make up owes us. Okay, in total, it will give us 5,720. Know that that 5,720, it is the balance brought down in your debtor's control account because it represents all the debtors that owe us. And as the entity, we only have two debtors. That's why we've got that 5,720 over there. It is the same as um, 5,720 total in the debtors list. They must always be the same, okay? This is an explanation of what we have done. You read through it because I've said everything that is there. And this is also an explanation of what we have done. Try this classwork um, 
and I'll post a video on this um, soon, soon. Yes, I'll post it soon, okay? Do it before you watch the next video. All I can say is, cause of 